Good afternoon, everybody. It is Wednesday, and it is time for episode three. And I hate to say it, but I'm not prepared. Um, I got sick when I went to camp for our last weekend. I, I caught a bug. And, you know, we went and did that big old free haul, and this has happened twice now that I've gone in somewhere that could possibly have mold or mildew and I got real sick so because Keith just reminded me because I told him I said you know it happened right after we went in that house um because I was blaming him because he came home from Texas sick so I figured I got it from him but I think it was kind of a you know it was a few things because I was feeling a little bit in my throat I was feeling a little bit of a hitch in there for a few days so anyways, yeah, I'm just, I'm not feeling well. I've been coughing and coughing and coughing. I've been sitting in, sleeping in a chair and I don't have a recliner. This is making me want to buy Keith a recliner. So when I'm sick, I have somewhere I can sit in. Uh, looks like it, I can hear thunder. Did you hear it a minute ago? There it is. It's supposed to be rainy and yucky. Okay, so this is episode three, and I was trying real hard to think about what to talk about for just a few minutes. I did not, like I said, I didn't prepare, and then I remembered. Um, I guess I'll just give you a recap of what's been going on with us. So, I went to juvenile pro. You hear the Blue Jays? I filled up their water bowl. And then, you know, they got stuff out there to eat. Anyways, I went to his juvenile probation with him last week. And uh, he had a different lady. And one of the things, okay, here's here's a good subject. It's one of the things when you're trying to get a child or a grandchild or, you know, somebody you're fostering or whoever, when you're trying to get them help. And I think it's more... I, I've never been a foster parent. I've been, you know, my glasses got some kind of is on the inside. <laughs> I'm a mess, y'all. Um, I would expect if you're a foster parent that maybe you get listened to because you're kind of part of the system. You know what I mean? You've had to go through the training. Uh, they've had to approve you. Um you're not necessarily part of the family, which could mean you're part of the problem, I guess. I don't know. But something I have run into over and over again while taking care of Isaiah is, number one, having to explain everything that's going on over and over again to new people. But number two, and very important, is being believed. I Nobody seems to want to believe me. Or maybe that's my perception. Um, but like when I met his uh, first probation officer, and he only has one. He's only been on one time. It was just a substitute lady the second time that I'm talking about. But the first one, the first day I met her, she was like, she told me at some point, well, you do want him to succeed, don't you? And boy, that just, I didn't realize until later that really stuck with me. I was like, why would she say that to me? Why would I be raising my own sons or grandsons or anybody else's sons and not want them to succeed? Why would somebody say that to a grandma that is in there telling you the troubles that they're having? I don't get it. And maybe I take things too personal. I'm sure I probably do sometimes. But man, they, they really, it, it really kind of gets to me having to talk to those people. So some things have happened uh, that we're going to make it, he was going to have to change, his, uh, we're not going to Cadillac anymore. His counselor is uh, kind of said, he did say, Keith took him because I was sick, so he went yesterday. He hadn't been there in a while because it was first day of school and then uh oh no it was orientation and then it was first day of school so those were two weeks that his appointment would have fell on so 
he went back yesterday and his counselor said we've hit a dead end you know we did dbt for six months plus he came here longer than that we went almost a year so it's dbt was longer than that uh but one of the things that he says all the time is counselors, therapists, psychiatrists, they don't fix people. They give them the tools to fix themselves. And they're there as a sounding board, you know, and um, to help. That's what they're there for. But they're not, they can't fix you. And, you know, you do kind of go in there going, kind of laying it on these people going, here, here it is. Can you fix this? You know, it's kind of like, well, I know this sounds awful. Kind of like a flat tire. You take it in, you go, here, fix this. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, so anyways, I went in this probation. And I got it kind of from her, the first meeting. And then it was the second meeting that he had gotten in all the trouble where we went to the hospital and he cussed us out and it was awful and all of that. And then the third meeting, which was last week. So this will be his fourth meeting. It means he's been there a month already. We got five more months to go. Hopefully that's all. Uh, so yeah, the third meeting last week, I went in there. It was another lady and you know, they're all very well intentioned. And I think part of the problem is me. I talk too much. I, I want people to know all of it. I'm like, here it is. This is what's going on. You know, we're doing everything we can. And people don't necessarily take it right. Uh, for one thing, when I say things, I'm very blunt. And I think they take that for not caring I'm not sure what I what I mean by that but I seem to get taken wrong I mean Keith has even seen it firsthand with a lady counselor that we took him to that that the counselor wanted to send him back to where she was trying to tell me what I needed to do to change the situation to make it better what I needed to do what was wrong with what I was doing as a parent and you know nobody's perfect nobody's a perfect parent but i've had this job for 39 years i have been raising kids for 39 years non-stop um I, my youngest child is 23 years old she was born in 2000 and well, i think she was six or something like that when i got ronald so i have literally not stopped and I never got summer vacations or, you know, I, I'm so jealous of everybody that has weekends with fathers and things. That, we don't get any of that. And I never did with my kids because their dad lived up in Boston or Iowa or somewhere far away. <coughs> Excuse me again. Um, but anyways, I've been doing this job a long time. And so I wouldn't. I, and also. I wouldn't be seeing a counselor if I wasn't raising this child. But Ronald doesn't need one. Once in a while, he gets a little Eeyore-ish. You know, he's a little down on the downside, but he's a he's a decent kid. Um, and, you know, aren't all kids decent? I, what is the right word? Um, he doesn't get in much trouble at all. Uh, and Isaiah just... It, it's constant and he's constantly on uh, four days of school. He's got four missing assignments. Um, so anyways, I'm feeling really, and I kind of knew this going in. I told Keith, I said, I, I don't like this. They analyze you. <clears throat> they give you, you know, you, you become part of the problem or whatever. So when I went and saw this lady last week, she was I told her about the hospital visit where I tried to give up my rights because he wanted me to. And because he pushed us to the point where we were just going insane and he, he didn't want to come home with us. He said he would commit suicide if he came home with us. So I sat in the hospital hallway and told the doctor, I'm, I'm here to give up my rights. And I was crying 
And he's like, you can't just do that. And I'm like, here, here's the deal. Here's what's going. Oh, okay. Okay. And we thought we were actually going to get somewhere at that time and it was going to happen. And it wasn't, you know, it was not the outcome I wanted. I want to raise my kids and my grandkids now and uh, just get on with the job and have a life. Hopefully, you know, hopefully I'll live that long. <laughs> but anyway, man, I just am wandering today, all right? I'm sorry. I apologize. And I'm up to 10 minutes. Oh, my God. I thought I didn't have anything to talk about. So I'm thinking that when you talk to the counselors and things about other people, a guardian, and usually it's just a guardian because other adults, you know, they don't, they don't have another person, an advocate that goes, and I'm supposed to be his advocate because I'm his guardian, you know, I'm his protector. And they don't even look at me like that. They look at me as like, oh, well, you, you probably are part of the problem. You're probably too strict or you're too mean or you're too whatever. Well, they don't. Anyways, what I learned from this is that I think less is more. Uh, so right now, Isaiah is not going back in to see another therapist or counselor. He is going to see a case manager. Um, and this is on the recommendation of his counselor that we have just kind of reached a dead end right now and that Isaiah realizes that he needs therapy, but he is unwilling to participate or try to make things better. And that's from the counselor. That's not from us. That's from him. Um, so, and I think he's right. You know, you have to want some of this so to stay on his meds and all that he needs to have a case manager um who probably talks to him and says how are things going but it's only once a month i think it's perfect for right now and you're still in contact with all the stuff if he needs to go back into counseling if you need more if you have and like he said if uh, the hotlines and all that they still apply you're still in the system and so that's what we're going to do with that right now and the probation, because I was sick, I called her today and said, is it all right if I just send Isaiah in? Um, and he said, and she said, yeah, you don't even have to come in. And I thought, okay, that's, you know, am I being overzealous? You know, less is more. That's what I'm going to name this video. Uh, me and my big mouth so far have gotten nothing accomplished. I have told my story to the world and my grandson still is a very troubled child. Hear the thunder? The weather is cooling off. It was so hot. I was sick. I woke up one time in the middle of the night just sweating just dripping and I guess it was a fever broke or something I don't know it was just it was a bad night but it's so nice to have a break in the weather and some clarity on what's going on the one problem I have is that will they make me go take him to a counselor anyways because he's on probation will they figure out that he's not seeing anybody that he's just seeing a case manager or will they just let us do what we are doing and um, talk to his counselor and realize this is the path we're taking right now? Um, but I think less is more from me for right now. I think I try too hard to fix a problem that maybe isn't going to be fixed at all. Or maybe it's not my job in this world to fix it. Um, it's just my job to take care of this boy and get him grown you know so <laughs> i'm gonna end this i don't even know where i'm going i'm kind of rambling <laughs> hopefully when you see me again i'll be feeling better and have a clearer mind um uh, less is more y'all we talk this stuff with isaiah to death keith and i we we just it makes our whole conversation we just drove we went to get the cart because it hasn't been running good and I wanted to check and make sure I closed everything down because I was sick. And I still didn't look at everything. 
<coughs> I don't know if I turned the pump off. Uh, so maybe that thunder is coming from my brain. Uh, yeah, do what you have to do. Do your best not to overthink it. You know? And um, take some time for yourself. It's okay to feel all those feelings. Take it easy, y'all. And good luck. Oops, I'm on the wrong side. <laughs>